So who's the real enemy in this horrible mess of bad infrastructure, housing supply, um, bad city management? Like, who's the real enemy? You know, we like to think the enemy... By the way, in Canada, the most common enemy for everything is the prime minister. You know, when anything goes wrong, it's the prime minister. Oh, there's floods in Toronto. That's <laughs> Trudeau. Or uh, oh, look at this. My wife. I, I. I. You know, my wife is divorcing me. It's Trudeau. Okay. Like seriously, we hear that endlessly, but it's probably not true. If your wife is divorcing, it's probably not Trudeau. Uh, but look, who? We got to think harder about this. Like, who are the politicians? Who are the administrators that we really should be mad at when it comes to housing in Canada? And look, I think we got to focus more, particularly on cities and, and most critically on big cities, because you know what? I think the people in Barrie try to do the best they can with the resources they have, but Toronto's budgets are astronomical. Montreal numbers are big. I mean, Calgary, Vancouver, these big cities have um, so much bigger budgets. Ottawa, I mean, they just have, and there's so many people there in those places. So what do I mean by the enemy? Here's what I mean. That essentially the solution for every problem that occurs in these cities tends to always be, we need more money. I'm serious. And, and that's very, very worrying because there's so much going wrong in these places, these towns, these cities, that the endless requirement for more tax money, more federal money, more provincial money, just give us more money. Like, I'm serious. Everything is about more money. So they point at, oh, look, there's there's a flood. We need a lot more money. Oh, there's a, there's fires. Oh, we're going to need a lot more money. Oh, there's congestion. Oh, we're going to need a lot more money. Oh, the traffic's bad. Oh, we're going to need a lot more money. Oh, the infrastructure's old. We're going to need a lot more money. Like, it's just hopeless. I mean, because there's only so much money. Canadians are some of the most, Canadians are some of the most taxed people on the planet of Earth. We could, just the answer to every question can't be give us more money. So we have to look at the problem. The problem is in many cases, the people who are running these cities are unqualified. What do I mean by that? I mean, they shouldn't be there. Look, the trouble with municipal politics is that it's a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of people vote for these politicians. Tiny number of actual votes get you to become a mayor, get you to become a city councillor. And what does that mean? That means some of these people are far from competent or far from a rational choice or, 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 or people who are even capable of doing good work. So when, and sometimes as low as 6% of eligible voters select a mayor because when you only about 22 percent of the whole available number of voters vote because that's typically what you get in a city a municipal election and then there's so many candidates that maybe only you know, a person who's getting 30 percent of that 18 percent gets to be the mayor then that's really very 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 few people who selected that person as mayor so it's a bad state to begin with. But look, let's break it down. Like, there's flooding. There's flooding in Toronto. There was flooding in exactly the same place as 11 years ago. So why didn't we just add storm sewers in those particular locations, in those neighborhoods, in those areas, those, those highways that were in a bad, bad way 11 years ago when the big rain came? But we didn't. Didn't do any of it. But today, what you hear is, oh, there's climate change causing these rains. There's probably going to be a lot more rain. So we need to raise millions and hundreds of millions of dollars more in funding, and we're going to address climate change. Just You should have just done the storm sewers 11 years ago, for the love of God. Why does nothing work? Like, why does, why do we still don't have a Crosstown LRT finished in Toronto? Why is it still not finished? finished double budget not finished nobody can tell you what it will finish why why do why are of all the electric buses in edmonton why have 60 percent of them failed and don't work anymore i mean like what about that 
light rail transit in Ottawa that barely works? I mean, like, why are there so many things that the city does and in the end, they don't really work? Like, there was billions and billions and billions of dollars spent, hundreds of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars spent, and in the end, the stuff doesn't really work. Who decided to buy that stuff? Who decided to, who's going to do those projects? And why in the world can't any of them ever get finished and working perfectly when they are finished? I mean, in other places in the world, when they finish transit, it works. And it finishes on time, but it never does here. Why is the traffic congestion beyond human comprehension in Toronto and Montreal? Because I hear the same thing about Montreal. I've talked to people who say, yeah, no, uh, it's, it's hopeless. Yeah, we can't get from one, place, one side of Montreal to another. It takes like an hour and a half. It's like nuts. Okay, so they haven't had the same incredible level of population growth as Toronto. So why is that so screwed up? Why? And why does... It can't, isn't there somebody who could build storm drains cheaply? Isn't there somebody who can replace these, these water pipes more reasonably than hundreds of millions of dollars? Like, I'm not saying this stuff is easy. It's not easy, but surely to God, it just somebody could do it better. Like, a buddy of mine is building, helping build a, uh, you know, a fourplex on an existing single family lot, because that's the rule in Toronto now. The rule in Toronto is you should be able to build a fourplex on a single family lot. And that's the council said, yes, yes, we're going to get more density. We're going to get prices down. We're going to have affordability. It's impossible to get this thing finished. Like, I'm serious. The Department of Forestry has to approve a new natural gas line. The Department of Forestry from the province? Like, wait a second. That's nuts. And it's taken like eight weeks just to get to try to think about looking at it. Like, folks, nimbyism, crazy, crazy nimbyism. That, and the reality is nobody wants that fourplex, and it just becomes so hard to do. Everyone will give up. It's supposed to be policy but everybody will give up. So, cities, are you the enemy? City governments all across Canada, are you the enemy of housing affordability? Maybe the answer is yes.